One and done, the Nuggets missed a chance to make the playoffs for the first time since 2013 on the final night of the regular season. They took an L, but this season will they bounce back. Expectations are a mile high. Can this young, cohesive core of talent that added a former MVP candidate meet and possibly exceed those expectations in a loaded Western Conference? Led by a coach who's in the last year of his contract. Hmm. We address all that and more in Denver's team preview. It's about to go down. I want to be all-star uh, for team I want to make, make a championship, a championship so that's the goal. 10 things to look for, 10 things you need to know. Welcome to the Denver Nuggets team preview. You could be anywhere else in the world, but you are here with us, and we appreciate that. Roe Parrish along with NBA legends, Derek Harper, and the czar, the telestrator, Mike Fratello. We dive deep into the season ahead for the Denver Nuggets. So how we get here, the Denver Nuggets, of course, were eliminated in game 82 the last two seasons. Oh, it was dramatic. Minnesota overtime. Last season before that, Russell Westbrook buzzer beater on their home court. Heartbreaking. They lose Richard Jefferson. Wilson Chandler's gone to Philly. Kenneth Fareed and that big cap number is moved to Brooklyn. Added former All-Star MVP candidate Isaiah Thomas. They drafted Michael Porter Jr. in the lottery with the 14th pick. We're going to get to all that shortly. And their franchise player, Nikola Jokic, signed a max deal. Five years, 148 million. So mm. we bring all that to come to this. And, and our producer, Burt Bondi, is bullish on the Nuggets. He already puts them in the playoffs in the Western Conference. So the question <laughs> is, I pose to you two gentlemen, started with you, Harp. Is this team a top four seed in the Western Conference? Possibly. If you were asking me simply about offense, I would say yes to that question because they're loaded uh, as an offensive team. They can really score with the best teams in the league. Problem for Denver is the other side of the basketball. Don't defend nearly well enough to, for me to move them all the way to fourth. But they have enough skill and enough depth as a team to really be good, especially this guy, Jokic, outstanding offensive player, can do a lot of things with his skill set. But I'm going to say four is a little bit of a reach right now. Let me just remind you about this. You've got a team named Golden State, a team named Houston, yeah, over yeah, there, yeah. a team named San Antonio, <laughs> over there, you, a team Mike. named Portland over there. <laughs> Top four, not happening. Not, not happening for me. <laughs> so, 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 Coach, you have Mike Malone. He's in the final year before your deal. D does that adjust his urgency? Does that make it that much more important to definitely try to win this season and get back to the playoffs? Michael Malone is an excellent basketball coach, and he's done a very good job with this team bringing it along. Mm -hmm. Having said that, he's a realist. People want to win. Ownership wants to win. Denver has not tasted the playoffs in a while, as you mentioned. It's time for them to get back to the playoffs. Is it going to be easy in the Western Conference? No, it's not. But do they have enough talent to try and make a run for that eighth, seventh, maybe sixth spot? Mm -hmm. Yes, they do. And that will be so important to Mike Malone's career. Defensively, we spoke about that. But, I mean, offensively, it's just like soul to soul back in the 90s. However do you want it, however do you need it. They can give it to you so many different ways offensively. Starting with the offense, how impressed are you with what they can do? They can score everywhere, inside, outside. How impressed are you? It's hard to beat Denver if you give them everything that makes them successful. You give them... Uh, Fast court baskets, three-point baskets, points in the paint, things of that nature. You're not going to beat this team because all of those areas they have covered on the offensive end of the floor. They have an all-star and a guy like Jokic can pass the ball, score the basketball. He knocks down threes. He does everything for this Nugget team. I don't think you, um, you can question them offensively. I, I think they've solidified themselves as one of the better offensive teams. But in order to really be good, you got to sure up the, uh, the defensive end of the floor. No question about it. So you talked about somebody, Jokic, who is clearly has a, a high basketball IQ. I spoke about earlier. They signed him to that max deal. So can he be an all-star? He's improved numbers every single year. You see on there on your screen points, rebounds, assists. He's the best three-point shooter. I mean, it's rare that you see a big man leading the team in assists. Coach, can this player make the all-star team in the Western Conference? Well, let me remind you, first of all, that now it's not by position only. It's front court, not mm -hmm. just centers, power forwards, small forwards. So that changes a whole lot. Then let me just drop a few names on you. Marcus Gasol, Pau Gasol, 
eight in the number one pick. Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert, Stephen Adams, mm. Nurkic. You want to answer that question? I mean, can hey. he make it? You know, a lot of it depends on how well they do as a team. I think that shows favor to a guy like Jokic make, making the all-star team. You just put out some guys that not only are good players, but they've been on all-star teams, and they've consistently shown the ability to, to do what they do, get the best out of their talents. But in the future, and I'm not talking this year, next year, who knows when, this guy's going to be an all-star. He has that much skill set as an offensive player, going to have to get better, going to have to get stronger. Those type things, but not a lot of holes in his game overall on the offensive end of the floor. Definitely not a lot of holes in his game. Very versatile. Had more triple doubles mm -hmm. last season than dunks. You rarely see that from a big man. Yeah, can pass it. Best passer on the team, arguably. Yeah. Harvey, you played with, with the big man, also playing with Patrick Ewing in your time yes. in New York. Playing with a big man like that, how does it help a guard's game? Well, it depends on what the, the big guy can do. Patrick, you spoke of, was a catch, uh, a pick and pop guy a lot of times. Could pick and roll also, but... When you talk about a guy like Jokic, playing with a guy like that, you can give him the ball anywhere on the floor, high post, low post. He can do a lot of different things. We talked about his ability to pass the ball and find open people. His IQ is supreme. You don't come out in the perimeter and guard him. He's going to knock down perimeter shots. This guy can be great. There you see him working on the block. When you have everything that he has in his toolbox, sky's the limit. Let's remember, this young man is more about team winning than he is about him putting up stats. In fact, sometimes unselfish to a fault, where his coaching staff has to tell him to be a little bit more assertive. He will get his teammates involved. Yeah. Six so assists a game, to exactly. your point. Exactly. So I think what we're saying here is as they win more games as a team, he will get that much more notoriety for the fact that he can score and he can pass and he can rebound. He does a lot of things. Jokic, a player that received a number of all NBA votes. Some people had him in the conversation for the MVP. Another player that was in the conversation for MVP, Isaiah Thomas, now joined the roster, has a cap friendly one year deal. Of course, we know he's been all over the place. This is his fourth <laughs> team in three seasons. It's been an up and down ride, personally and professionally. What can Mike Malone and the Denver Nuggets expect? From IT coach, starting with you. Well, one thing we start out with is the fact that Mike Malone and Isaiah Thomas were together in Sacramento. So he knows what Isaiah Thomas is capable of doing. Isaiah Thomas knows what Mike Malone expects from him. Having said that, this is a huge season for Isaiah Thomas's career and how far he can move forward. If you ask them what's his status right now, they'll say, we have no timetable yeah, right. for him to return. They want him to come back. They want him to come back as the healthy Isaiah Thomas like he was in Boston. We'll see if that happens. You know, I think for Isaiah at this stage in his career, I think it's certainly physical because he had that contusion, the knee problem that he had, hip problem, beg your pardon, and didn't want to come off the bench in Cleveland. And I th in L.A., didn't want to come off the bench there. I think he's at the stage in his career where he has to decide what role he wants to play on a team. Coming off the bench isn't a bad thing. If you can come off the bench, your, your mindset is to score the basketball. I think that would be a perfect role for him in Denver under Coach Malone and, and their system. He will let them play. And Isaiah has to have a lot of freedom to be successful as an offensive player. He's an undersized point guard that can flat get it done with the basketball. And I think that coming off the bench will suit him very well. It's going to be interesting to see what he does. He's a player who averaged a clip under 30 points per game, shooting 54% at that. Now, I would be foolish not to take advantage of the basketball knives between these two. They are right here, and we're going to take it to the court next to show you how the Joker and company get those easy buckets. You will be astonished at how it's done. Stick around. Playing with a guy like Jokic is always a blessing. The beauty of it is because of the way he plays, it keeps rhythm in the game, right? He doesn't pound it. Head's always on a swivel. He's just looking to make the right basketball play. There I go right there. Just like that. As you can see, Jokic is a outstanding passer. The dribble handoff was his specialty, so of course we had to bring it to the court. Coach Harp, let's go ahead and break this thing down and show everybody how this is done and how they score so easily. Do you mind being Jokic for a little bit? No problem. We're going to put your hand, the ball on your hand at the top of the circle. I'm going to try and play a little defense here. Yeah. I'm Mr. Harper coming out yes, of the sir. corner. Here we go. I'm going to come around. And the defender decides to go underneath that big screen set by Jokic. So 
As a result, the shooter. My, my number one responsibility in this play is to try and get in the lane, right? Depending on what the depending on what the defense is going to do. I get here, and Coach Fatello is guarding me. He gets locked on the screen. I'm going to stop and pop and knock down the little short jump shot. You can make this an easier shot by moving the dribble handoff down a little bit. So if I come off, he's locked there. Then I'm stopping. I'm popping. And, and knocking down that little short shot. If he continues to trail on the on the dribble handoff, which is another way to defend it, I'm gonna you sh you gonna pick him off. I'm gonna have a layup, or if the defender that's guarding Jokic is here, that's gonna make Jokic wide open. He can knock down that little perimeter jump shot right behind me. And that that that's why it's so difficult to guard because you got two offensive guys that can score the basketball. How about if we show them one more thing that Let's can happen do it. where do it. I know where you're going. This shooter keeps stopping behind that big screen, knocking right. down jump shots, right. and I'm getting tired of him doing what he wants to do. So right. this time I become overly aggressive. Yes. I decide that I'm going to get up into him and, and fight through try and to go shoot over the, the top. Yes. And all of a sudden he changes direction, and there he's got that backdoor layup. Woo. Very difficult to guard, wouldn't you say? That and the pick and roll are two of the hardest things to defend as a d defensive it's team. It's a great series to run, particularly when both players mm -hmm. have the talents and skills to move without the ball, yes. to run their cuts hard, mm -hmm. run the defender into screen, off screens, and then if you have a big guy like Jokic who can make the pass and make the shot, yeah. that's a tough series to guard. It certainly is. Definitely tough to guard. Taking a look at what they did last season, how they executed it perf to perfection against San Antonio. Coach, how does this play develop? Well, here, here he goes underneath, and watch what happens. All of a sudden, the shooter reads the screen, reads the defender going underneath. So just like Derek said, step back, yep. get a wide open look, and he knocks it down. Yep, Danny Green got caught up on the screen, and it was an easy shot. Take a look here. Same situation. Jokic doing his job, setting a big screen. And that time, Harris able to get all the way to the rim, mainly because of the concern of Jokic being able to knock down that per perimeter shot you just spoke of. Having that floater in the guard's arsenal of tools is yep. certainly effective when you come down that lane. And then if you freeze that big guy just for yes. a moment, there's Jokic rolling to the basket. You know, nine times out of ten, when you watch pick and roll basketball, you watch dribble handoffs, things of that nature, the offensive, the two players that are involved are very clever passers. You just talked about it. And they can shoot the basketball. They can score the basketball. So that puts a lot of attention on those guys, and they can do a lot of different things and make plays on the offensive end. Yes, they can. Coach, you spoke, spoke about that arsenal. The depth chart is amazing. The offensive repertoire that they have. You have Murray, who made Emmanuel Moutier expendable. Harris, giving you 17 a game. You have Plumlee. They have so many options. This is one of the deepest teams in the NBA. Imagine if Millsap ever yes. gets back <laughs> to what Millsap was, okay? The Millsap that they signed to that contract. If he comes back to the old form he had, this young backcourt growing and developing, and then Barton as that sixth man slash starter coming off the bench or in the starting role, yes. they're pretty effective offensively. The, the, the thing that I like, when you start talking about Jokic and Millsap, whether or not they can coexist, they can because both guys have some similar styles as players. Jokic can knock down the outside shot. So can Millsap from the perimeter. So it's very difficult to hone in on what they're trying to do out on the floor. Millsap, a very outstanding player, four-time All-Star, missed 44 games last season, was somewhat of the glue, but they were still able to be productive offensively with him not being in the lineup with other players stepping up. You know, you look at a Gary Harris who gave you 17 a game, was able to do it offensively and defensively. Talk about him and the other backcourt and how they're able to perform so well in Denver. Well, besides numbers that Millsap put up, mm -hmm. I think one of his biggest things is with this young group, he can give them that blacksmith's mentality mm -hmm. that you come in and you pound each night and you pound each night and you work at it and you're physical and you're tough because we're not going to be a playoff team unless we have the mental toughness. And sometimes with young players like the backcourt you just mentioned, they have to understand how hard it is to make the playoffs, particularly in the Western Conference. You know, we were talking about them possibly being fourth in the Western Conference. I don't agree with that, but I do think Denver is one of those teams that you catch them at the wrong time. They can 
really be a problem for you in the first round of the playoffs. Particularly at home in their Absolutely. building where they <laughs> well, you can don't run and put numbers up and <laughs> you're altitude. sucking wind right there. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, the only look, place I ever asked to come out of the game was in Denver. Altitude. That altitude <laughs> is crazy. So you, ha you have Murray who's solidified himself at the point guard position, giving you about 16 per game, received votes for most improved player. What about his game makes their offense run so smoothly? I think he has the ability to do both things. He can be a guard to run the show, get the ball into the right people's hands at the right time. Yet he has this, the ability to certainly make shots, mm -hmm. which you have to do from the point guard position nowadays. You just can't be a facilitator for everybody else. There are times where you have to take over, make a big shot, make a big play at the right time for yourself, as well as doing the things you need to do to get your teammate shots. You know what makes him so good is his size. He's a big point guard. He can see the floor. His head is always up. He's looking to find people, but just a very talented offensive player that can do a lot of different things with the basketball and off the bounce. Someone who was also very talented in his time in high school is Michael Porter Jr. We know that he didn't play that much in Mizzou, but the Nuggets still took him 14th overall in the lottery. High risk, high reward. What do you expect from this, this player? Do you think he's going to play this season? That's a good question. I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to try and play one on TV either, but I, this guy supposedly has the skill set. I don't think we know enough about him, coach, to know exactly what he's going to turn out to be. Obviously drafted 14th, that's pretty high uh, for a player that, that's had some injuries and things of that nature, but you got to have to play the wait and see game with Porter. Coach, what, what, Regal, regardless of what his clipping said coming out of high school, this is the NBA right yes, now. Sir. And this is a player that has had some severe back issues that they hopefully have corrected now. Yes. But if he's physically okay, and if he does possess the skills that we heard about so much coming out of high school, this is a steal with mm -hmm. the 14th pick. But that's all on the come. That remains to be seen. So if we're counting on him to give them a lot of productivity, I think we're wrong right now. It's a little bit too early to rush this guy along and expect he's going to be a major contributor on a playoff team. You will definitely have to keep our eye open on that. Well, someone who's a major contributor is Mike Malone, but, oh, look at him. He's getting it done on the court. Coach, look at the handles. Former point guard, he is a coach's son. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he jumps in the drills. We're going to get social. The Nuggets, team preview, more coming up. Stick around. Come on, coach. Let me show you something, baby. Come on. <laughs> well, I used to be able to do that a long time ago. <laughs> They missed the 2018 playoffs on the final day after losing to Minnesota in the regular seasons. Oh, and by the way, the Wolves and Nuggets will meet again on the final day of this regular season, but this time it will be in the Rockies. They've missed the playoffs in the last five seasons. Advanced past the first round only one time. That was back when Dikembe Mutombo held the ball up. Oh, okay, we won't go there. Uh, but then they lost in the Western Conference Finals to the Lakers. So it's payoff time. Wins and losses, the number is 47.5. Will they have more wins or less wins? I, I'm going to say about the same. Um, a healthy Millsap, I think, certainly helps their chances as far as uh, getting, getting to, the, uh, to the playoff this year. But I could see this team, if things come together properly, being the surprise team of the Western Conference. They have a lot of talent, a lot of depth. I like Coach Malone as a, as a coach, and um, I'm anxious to see them starting this season. They won 46 games last season, finished ninth, missing out, as you mentioned, on the last night. They may be a better team this year than they were last year, but getting to 47, as you yeah. just mentioned, may be a little bit harder this year because yeah. of more balance in the Western Conference. Here's the teams that I look at that I'm saying Denver's got to get past these teams to get one of the spots. New Orleans, Minnesota, Clippers, Dallas, and the Lakers. Watch out. There I think is. they're there. I, I really do. I, you, you named some teams, Coach, that obviously have a chance this year as far as uh, getting that seventh, eighth spot in the Western Conference. But I, I think the more time that this team is together, the better they're going to mesh together and be right there. So give me a seed. In the Western Conference, where do you think they'll be seated at? If you don't think they'll be in the top four, where do you see them as far as their seeding goes? Well, uh, let me say this. You just mentioned the more time they're together. Yes. Michael Malone, their coach, mentioned this team started in the summer in Denver. Yes. Went out to, out to L.A., mm -hmm. or Vegas, I should say. Continuity. Yeah, from there to Atlanta, then back in. They have been together he said, we have a head start on the rest of the league because mm -hmm. we've been together for so long. 
I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's where seven Denver's going to be, yes. Well, we know they're going to be good offensively. Your former player, Mark Price, is now going to be coaching as a shooting coach with the team. So the numbers will definitely improve offensively, but defensively, that's where we're going to have to see an improvement for them to get a higher seat. Yeah, and, and guards, if you shoot like Mark Price, you're way ahead of the game because that no guy this didn't miss an open like shot. Oh, man. No way. That's DJ my guy. DJ Ben spent 14 seasons as the Nuggets DJ. He retired. I wish him a happy retirement. Enter DJ Pause for Coach, for Hart, Roe Parrish. We're out of here.